a global security analyst and a former analyst at the CIA. She has spent 16 years working on global security and international affairs, including as a special advisor to Vice President Joe Biden on national security, a senior intelligence officer, and a U.S. diplomat. Yael, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Um, let me ask you, President Trump tweeted today, the real scandal here is that classified information is illegally given out by intelligence like candy. Very un-American. This isn't the president's first time taking on the intelligence community. And Yael, you have a unique perspective. What do you make of these comments? Well, first of all, I think it's really interesting that he's already blaming the intelligence community when, from everything that I read, we don't know who actually leaked the information. So I just actually want to start with that point. Just, that information could, it, it is true, it could have come from somebody in the intelligence community. It could have come from someone at the White House, from someone at Congress. It could have come from anyone in the government. So he has already laid down the marker that this is yet another battle he wants to go through with the intelligence community. And I just find it excessively dangerous to continue to play this game with the men and women of the CIA or with the FBI or with any of our intelligence communities who are there to ultimately serve us. But is there a higher than normal level of, it, of leaks going on right now? So I can't quantify if there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, without question, there's a higher level of media attention to it because our own president is the one who keeps bringing it up. I mean, we do know that leaks have always been a problem in the U.S. government, and we know that President Obama, you know, spoke about this as well. This is not something new, but it is new to have a president already attack the intelligence community when my reading of both the Washington Post and New York Times articles were that it was four or five former and current government officials. They didn't specify who the leaks were from. So to me, it's a little bit odd that we already are talking so much about that element of it. Well, well just give us some context and some background here. You know, intelligence agencies like the CIA, the NSA, they're meant to be, for obvious reasons, a political nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. But how important is it that they remain that way? It is absolutely fundamental to everything that we as Americans hope our agencies will protect us from. I mean, we, I want to continue to have faith in my institutions. And these are the institutions at the end of the day, even beyond the Russia story, that are there to protect us. And I, I'll just use from my own experience from the CIA, as a CIA analyst, being nonpartisan, I mean, that is your bread and butter. You know that from the day you arrive. And when it is, it is the worst thing you can actually say to a CIA analyst is to accuse them of being political. And when that accusation is coming from our own president, it not only demoralizes the analysts, but it also, it's going to be harder to recruit in the future the next generation of CIA analysts when they feel both useless because our president's saying that he doesn't even read what their analysis is provided to him, and when they are being pitted in the American public debate as having some evil ulterior motive. Uh, let me ask you, when you hear things uh, like the reports that officials such as KT McFarland, for instance, walked into a National Security Council meeting with, um, you know, using the phrase, make America great again, um, mm -hmm. with this kind of campaign rhetoric that was very much prominent during the time before the election, but here we are now, the election is long over, and they are, the Trump administration has been in office. Um, what for you, as someone who was in the intelligence community, when you hear that, what reaction do you have? So what's interesting there is having also served on the national security staff, if I were in a meeting and they came in and, and were continuing this rhetoric of campaigns, part of the real issue there is the national security staff is also made up of people who are career government officials and they serve under any administration. I mean, I started under Clinton, I continued under Bush and continued under Obama. And to have them come in and make it clear that this is going to continue to be political, it could make it actually very difficult for people to really provide absolute valuable analysis that is critical for the president to be able to make key decisions if they feel like they only want to hear something that fits their campaign rhetoric. And by bringing that into meetings, it's already setting the stage of, we want you to tell us what fits our agenda. And I think that's very concerning to give that message as well to the intelligence community. Can you just give us some background? How is it 
traditionally, how has it traditionally worked? When you have a new administration coming in and you have career officials in the intelligence community uh, with their product, with the results of uh, their work, how does that flow normally? We know that the president is briefed regularly, obviously. So with any new administration, there's going to be some hiccups in the beginning because every president likes to get their information in a different way. You have some that prefer to be briefed. You have some that prefer to read first and then be briefed. And so we, we understand that, that in the first few weeks that there will be changes, and the CIA is used to that. And the CIA will huddle and figure out what's the best way to serve this president. But that is totally different from hearing the president doesn't want to hear what you have to say at all. So generally, you have... No matter what, your analysis does not change based on who's the president. It's only in how it's delivered, whether it's delivered with more graphics or more talking points or more orally. Those are the things that change. But the actual analysis and the actual way you gather that analysis and provide information to the president should not change ever. Mm. I, I want to read a quote from John Schindler, a former National Security Agency mm -hmm. analyst. He wrote in a column for the New York Observer, quote, our intelligence community is so worried by the unprecedented problems of the Trump administration. Not only do senior officials possess troubling ties to the Kremlin, there are nagging questions about basic competence regarding Team Trump that it is beginning to withhold intelligence from a White House which our spies do not trust. And I'm being told just now that the Wall Street Journal is coming out with similar reporting even as we speak. So what do you make of that? So I read this one as well, and I have very mixed feelings about this because I'm not sure how accurate his information is. I do think, I do not believe our intelligence community should start holding back because I don't think that's right. No matter what, they still serve this administration. That said, I do think that it is standard throughout time. The CIA doesn't give all sorts of compartmented information that doesn't actually need to be shared, like this person gathered this information by paying so-and-so this much money. Those are the types of details that don't need. So if they're holding back those kinds of details, that's normal. If they're holding back analysis, that is problematic. But I, I have a hard one with this one because I'm not sure how true it is. If it's also, if it's one analyst who told him, I don't want to give it up my all, okay, that's troubling. If it's the CIA director himself who says, I'm not going to let this piece go forward, that's another story. And that's the granularity I'm not sure is involved in that particular piece. I mean, could there conceivably be a situation where someone feels that for the greater good of the safety of the country, they might decide um, that it is in the best interest of the country to withhold information? Is that something that would even perhaps potentially be a path that someone within one of these agencies might decide to go down. It is such an important question, and it's unprecedented times. I would love to say that is impossible mm -hmm. in the CIA that I know under three different administrations. That is just inconceivable. Right now, I don't know, I'm not in those meetings anymore, but I don't know if they're sitting around saying, we have this information, but we actually think providing it will do more harm to the United States of America than it would if we did provide it. I, I don't know how those discussions are going, but if that's coming from the highest levels of the CIA, that would be extremely surprising to me. And, and as far as you're concerned, there's no precedent for any no. kind of activity like that. Because not that you, I'm aware of, no. Not that you're aware of. All right. Um, because what would be the impacts, potentially, of a decision like that to knowingly withhold very important classified information about the security and safety of this country from the commander in chief? Right. And I, I cannot in any way imagine that that would be the case. I cannot imagine that the CIA would withhold information that actually affects the national security of our country. If what this person is writing is true, I would think it might be more about just the Russia investigation or things that are actually implicate somebody in this administration. And yes, the implications will be serious if that turns out to be true, it will undermine the public's faith in those institutions. And that is the really unprecedented situation we find ourselves in. But I cannot for a second believe that they would withhold information that would actually affect our safety and our security. All right, Yael Eisenstadt, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your perspective with us. It's really important for people to understand uh, that perspective of uh, folks in the intelligence community. Appreciate it. Thank you.